<clears throat> Great. Okay. Well, good morning. Well, good day, everybody out in California, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, Gabby, you're at the center in Santa yeah. Clarita, California. And I can hear the, the beasts in the background. A bird. There's a bird. <laughs> yeah. Is it inside or outside? The bird is inside the house. Oh, okay. <laughs> the gibbons are outside. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, this is such a wonderful documentary. Um, oddly enough, my retirement plan is to uh, volunteer at a, at a very small um, primate sanctuary in Sunderland, Ontario, called Storybook. I don't know if you've heard of it. But yeah, um, yeah so this is like a, a course for me, a, a preparation. Um, and it was just such a joy to watch. And it, it occurred to me that you don't, each, uh, each gibbon has his or her own personality, obviously, and they do what they want to do in a safe space. Do you ever, uh, do you have to resist the urge to, to intervene sometimes if, if maybe you think they're putting themselves or another gibbon in danger? Has that ever happened? Yes, if, if they are putting themselves in danger, I will intervene. If they are fighting and it's a serious fight, we would intervene, yeah. And how do you do that? Uh, we can separate them. So if there's a serious fight, they chasing each other, we give both kind of a timeout. They need to calm down a little bit and then uh, meet again. <laughs> right, okay. Now, <laughs> speaking of the, the number that you have, you have so many of them and they're all so gorgeous and so different. Um, but Gibbons are endangered, as you remind us. What is, what is the situation now worldwide? So from the 20 species, 19 is either endangered or critically endangered. And one species of gibbon is down to around 30 individuals. And uh, that's the hyenan gibbon. Did you say 13? 30, 30, 30 individuals. 30. Yes, yeah. Man, oh man, it, it is a dire situation. And this is part of what you do is, um, well, you received animals from other, from other zoos and, and other sources, but now you are in a position to start breeding and, and, and sending them where they need to be, right? Yeah, so we've been participating in copti breeding programs, species survival plans for many years. And um, we have like the Northern white chick gibbons, we have eight of them born here, Javan gibbons, 12 of them born here. And uh, they are kind of all over the world now. And we have one gibbon that it's a candidate to be released back into the wild. So uh, it's possible that in the future there could be some Coptic born gibbons get, get a chance to release back into the wild. So that's one of our uh, goals for the future. Uh, that's so wonderful to hear. So wonderful to hear because as one of the women in the uh, docu documentary said, uh, you know, we're in a sixth extinction. Oh, it was Jane Goodall who said that. We're in a sixth extinction. So we have to do everything we can to try and turn it around if we yeah. can or not. Now, Alex, this is really critical subject matter. It's part of a, the larger picture of this very topic. Um, did, how much thought did you give to making it uh, maybe a little bit, um, not political, but to, as an alarm? It really is. The, <clears throat> uh, first, thank you for having us. The, um, it, it took several iterations in the very beginning we thought of the film as a public information message. I reached out to Gabi and uh, we talked about like a five, 10 minutes informational <laughs> piece about the center, about the Gibbons. Uh, but the stories were, were so dramatic, so, so interesting. And we thought that the, the uh, really a better way is to have stories of both people and animals that people can relate to, can enjoy, can understand. And in the background, they can all, can give them also the message about the plight of the, the, the gibbons in the wild. The numbers, the, uh, uh, the numbers that, that, that uh, yourself and Gabby mentioned, 19 out of 20 it is a very, very alarming numbers. Uh, essentially it's all the species except for one is either endangered, critically endangered or, or very close to extinction. 
so the once we started the film, uh, we thought again like like a, a short short uh, film. Uh, once Michael got involved in the film, we worked together, and we thought that the, really the minimum we can do it will be like around 30, 35 minutes. Uh, and that was the first cut of the film was a short. Uh, later, we, we, we had a chance to, to interview uh, Dr. Jen Godal, as you mentioned, and that added uh, a, a great dimension to it in terms of education, in terms of the criticality of, of the situation. And then we expanded the film to the full feature, the one that you watched. Well, it could have been three more hours long. As it was, it was just over an hour, right? But it, it, I could watch it all day. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. Yes, it's exactly <laughs> over an hour. It's like an hour and two now, minutes. Michael, what kind of challenges did you face? I mean, it's you're working with uncontrollable stars. <laughs> and then, you know, people like Gabby who are, uh, you can discuss. Equally uncontrollable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby's the one that could get inside the cages, uh, enclosures, I'm sorry. And um, and really get those big close-ups of the mm. animals. So she, you know, it's it's you know we could stick a camera lens like right at the enclosure, so you could not see the metal. But um, but Gabby's the one that really got you know just the, the best photography. Um, Challenges, I'm sorry, what was the question? Just the challenges of making it and, and uh, setting out to, to accomplish what everybody wanted in a very unusual setting. Well, we kept on going back and kept on shooting more stuff and, um, and adding material. Um, Anastasia was born uh, and, and so we had, to, we had to cover that. And then Orion was old enough to photograph. So he, you know, I mean, kids are our future. So I, I, I thought that was an important thing. Um, but the challenges were just t typical. What you do, I mean, you know, lighting was always changing. So that's, that's a challenge. It, it took a lot of post-production coloring to kind of even out the lighting because Within 20 seconds, you know, a shadow can, a cloud can go over someone, and it completely changes. But, yeah. but I don't, I, I, you know, it, it didn't. There wasn't a lot of challenges except for, you know, waiting for the animal to do something. I think they did quite a bit. <laughs> well, that took a lot of photography to get to get to that point. Yes, yes, a lot of hours, a lot of footage to get an hour, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah if I may add, it, it's uh, the uh, couple of times, actually not a couple of times, uh, almost all the time, when we were recording, when Michael, myself, and Gabby are recording interviews with, with people, very often the given started to sing like in the middle of it, and then you wait, and then, uh, which is very, very, uh, very beautiful you record them and then uh, we can start over and then they might sing again. So they, they had this aspect, it wasn't really a challenge, it was fun, uh, but it was, was out there that we're not following our schedule. It's usually <laughs> the schedule is dictated by the Gibbons. So why did they do that? For They figured they weren't getting any attention, Gabby? Uh, they say every day a couple of times. It's usually to mark their territory, but very often when I'm giving a tour, they will start saying in the middle of the tour. And just like my parrot, I'm talking, he wants to vocalize because it's like a little bit of a competition. Who's the loudest? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yes, and I do want to talk about the sound that they make, the singing. It's eerie. It's, it's like hearing the whale music for the first time. Just stunning. And I mean, maybe you've thought of it, but perhaps you could release a CD as a fundraiser of the song because people would love to have that. Yes, we actually make a CD just with my recordings, but we've been talking about making like a professional recordings and release a CD. That, that would be great. It's a lot of fun to, to hear it. And it's so interesting to see how they form them when you're nice and close up. Uh, and the two faces together, and you can see them forming the sounds 
and understand how they make them and wondering, you know, what are they saying? But you say it's territorial. They, so they have to, yeah. Yeah. So they have to mark their territory every morning. Yes, but it's more than just marking the territory. It's also express belonging and family sing together. And the mother and daughter has a very strong bond. And from the beginning, when the infant is just a couple of weeks old, they start singing along with their mother. And they often put their faces right next to each other to sing together and able to coordinate together. And then because here we have uh, 37 givens, they often all sing together. And uh, Pepper is one of the hero of the movie. She's the lead singer. And we have other gibbons that wait for Pepper to start and sing along with her. And if one decide that today I'm going to start, Pepper just ignores them. <laughs> so it's a community song. <laughs> well, you know, it, and things got pretty tough between a, a couple of the males a few times. Um, I mean, they're very passionate creatures uh, and they're not, you know, socialized the way we are. They're socialized the way they are. Uh, so it was fun to get a glimpse of that. Um, how much time do you spend, like just taking it in, or do you have time to do that to appreciate? I'm pretty it? much outside all day, so I take care of them. But at the same time, I'm watching them. I live on site, so yes. uh, this is my life, living among uh, 37 givens. So I'm taking it in. <laughs> yeah, and if something happened overnight, I'm the one who hear it first. <laughs> yes. Oh, and another thing, uh, the wildfire that came through some years ago, there wasn't a recurrence this year at all, was there? There is every year there is uh, a couple of fires near or in Santa Clarita, uh, but that one was the closest. Man, oh man, that was that was heart pounding. And yeah. Did they, they obviously recognized that something was wrong you, because it's sad, um, but how, how did you recognize that something was wrong? What were they doing? You know, it's interesting. I, they didn't really get it. So there were flames on the other side of the road next to us and I continue feeding them um, to keep All everybody night. calm. Um, at night, they, we just went to bed and there was a few gibbons that were just kind of sitting out and just monitoring things. Uh, and we were out also, you know, hosing things down and monitoring the fire, but they were not like making an alarm call. They were very quiet. Yes, yes. Yeah. That was pretty hair raising. Michael, did you have a favorite gibbon or pair of gibbons that you grew attached to? Well, Pierre, because he loves me so much. <laughs> Are you he, saying he didn't? Because he doesn't like men, right? He doesn't like men, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what, and, I, and Violet's pretty cool, too. Um, I want to point out something about sound that you mentioned. Um, there's a little section, um, uh, and it's a UCLA... Uh, a graduate student, is that, is that right, Alex? He's a graduate he student? He is a PhD student, yes. Okay. Chris, is it? Tyler, Tyler was in the And okay. it's about a three minute section of the movie. But he built this device that could record, I think, six sets of ears. Yes. And also his camera can go around so um, you know, it, it, we had to fake it because we were only, I mean, if, if you got to hear it in 5.1, you could hear it a little bit better, but this, you could hear the sounds moving around you. You were talking about um, the sounds. Yeah, that was amazing. The ears, the, the unusual the instrument. Yeah. When I, yeah, when I recognized it. Now, Alex, what about you? Did you have a favorite? Let's leave Pierre out of this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, my favorite was was Violet. I like how how uh, Rambaksha she is. I like uh, <laughs> the stories that we put in the film, but the other ones we didn't put in the film. Uh, I like that she is indeed the center of the entire the entire center. Uh, uh, the uh, this is not joking. It's uh, 
it seems a lot of the activities revolves around her. Uh, in the beginning, uh, one of the earlier version of the film, we had Violet in the name. Uh, the name of the film was Violet is Blue. And oh. then we changed it to the center. But she, she was such an instrumental and such a charismatic and such an, uh, you know, uh, attention grabbing uh, given <laughs> that uh, she was the focus and it's really very hard not to love her. No kidding. I just want to speak um, briefly. I don't want to give away what happened, but something takes place towards the end of the film that's kind of mystical or weird or unexpected. Um, and when they, four o'clock in the morning and they're up singing because something has happened. Did that surprise you that they knew something had happened not around them? Are you asking me or asking Gabby? Oh, I was asking Gabby. Yes, of course. Yes, so when I heard it, um, I was surprised, but I also kind of knew what, what happened. So I, I don't want to say more, but yes, uh, it was very surprising, but... Um, Gives you chills. Anyway, yeah. people will have to watch it to see what it is we're talking about, and then they'll be shocked too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just as a part of, of the filmmaking, that was a very moving... Uh, Oh, we had it exactly as it happened, but it was, was a very moving uh, for us just as filmmakers, learning it first and then documenting it afterwards. Unbelievable. So how many volunteers are at the center now? Uh, right now, we don't have a volunteer, uh, but oh, because on site. COVID? No, no, just uh, today, it's a Monday, and we oh. just don't have anyone. But uh, yeah. most of the time, we have one or two volunteers on site helping with food prep, uh, yard work, doing observations, so with many different things. And we have about 20 volunteers as a base. We have someone that's coming for like 16 years, volunteering every Tuesday. Isn't that fantastic? Well, more people should volunteer with animals for sure. Um, it's so important, especially endangered animals. So uh, congratulations to all of you. This is just warms my heart. It's such a wonderful film and it's so hopeful and there's so much thank emotion you. in it. So thank, thank you, so you very, very much. Very, very much. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. Thank you. Good luck with the rest of, of your career there, Gabby, and yours thank in you. filmmaking. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you.